You're listening to The Front Stretch on AM590, Omaha's ESPN Radio. Brought to you by Joe's Carding and Council Bluffs. Online at joescarding.com. Well, this is Turn 3 on The Front Stretch, presented by Joe's Carding and Council Bluffs on 23rd Avenue next to AMC Theaters. They're online at joescarding.com. That's carding with a K. Get to Joe's today. Get some fast-paced white-knuckle racing in where the only speed restriction is how fast you are. And it's about time this studio started looking a little pretty. I mean, we've been uglying it up for quite a while now. It's like the uh, we're, we're the dwarves, and now Snow White has walked in. We're sitting in studio with Lainey Schwartz today. She's driving the number 18 Sport Mod out of I-80 Speedway. Where else do you race, Lainey? I also race at Eagle Raceway on Saturday nights. Do you, is, there a, is that a weekly thing? Or I, I remember Bud had mentioned something that this was uh, a couple of weeks ago was the first time you were able to hop back in the car on a Saturday night. Um, we've had some bad luck going, and we wrecked a car pretty bad, so we had to take a week or two off. But for the most part, we try to do weekly at both. Well, there's, the, the one thing I do want to say right there is you're all right, though, because I heard that the wreck that you're talking about was at ID Speedway, you and uh, Robinson. It was nobody's fault. It was just a racing deal. I want to make that clear, but I heard both of you were banged up pretty good, and it's good to see that you're back in the seat, and it looks like you're doing pretty good. Yeah, it <laughs> that was one of the harder hits I've had in a long time, but my neck was pretty sore for a couple days, but... Just about knocked the blonde out of your hair. Yeah, pretty close. <laughs> so what, what did happen, if you can describe it for us? Um, he broke coming down the straightaway, and he said his uh, drive shaft just dug in, and it turned him around right in front of me, and everyone swerved, and by the time I got there, he was right in front of me, and there was really nothing I could do. So so were you a little ways back, and he was, he'd was he slowed down, and you just hit we him straight had, on? Yeah, we had just took the green, so everyone was all kind of clustered mm. up, and... By the time everyone cleared, he was just right there, and it was a really tacky track, so yeah. we were going fast. And well, that's uh, it's good that you're that you're doing all right, though. Yeah, we're glad ca- to see that. The car definitely isn't though. <laughs> <laughs> now, is it the same car? Or do you have a whole new car now? Oh, uh, we had two. We had oh, Old okay. Faithful, and then I was in the Hoffman, but the Hoffman's still in pieces. Yeah. Oh, so you're is, in Old Faithful right now? Oh yeah. Are you guys gonna try to get the Hoffman back up and running? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so how is your season going overall then? At I-80, we really haven't had that good of luck yet, but we're hoping it turns around. Eagle, we've been doing pretty decent. Yeah. We're at least making the feature every night, usually top 10 in there. So That's good. That's great. And uh, so what, what did get you started in racing? Well, my dad was one of the original five owners of I-80 that own it now. And he, him and Ed and Joe and Steve and all them started the four-cylinder class. And one day he came strolling up the driveway with a four-cylinder car and I'm like dad what's that for and he's like oh you're gonna race it and I was like no I'm not he's like yeah you really are (laughs) so that's where it started so he got you started in the sport compacts yep nice he created this so now he gets to suffer through it (laughs) (laughs) Uh, talk about what it's been like in such a male-dominated sport I mean and for those who for those out there listening that don't know who Lainey Schwartz is, she's not somebody that runs around in the back of the pack. I mean, she's a threat. She's won at Eagle. I don't. I can't remember if you've won at IED or not, but I know you've you know ran up front at IED. She goes to specials. I mean, she's she's good. I mean, she's she's no pushover. When she straps on the belts and puts that helmet on, you better take Lainey Schwartz all serious, or it's going to get real ugly real fast. Uh, so, what was the question exactly? <laughs> <laughs> what's it, what's it like to be in a, in a male dominated sport like this? I mean, when you got guys like sobbing and, and whatnot out there, I mean, you know, your boyfriend sobbing. <laughs> Jesse. Oh boy, we're having so much fun. <laughs> Let me ask the question. What's it like to be in a male-dominated sport? Personally, you know, I try to gain the guys' respect as much as possible. I don't want to, you know, be the little sissy girl that walks around the track or be the drama queen. So, for the most part, I try to bite my tongue until, you know, last year there was an incident. It took me six weeks of him hitting me to finally go up and say something. But I try to respect the guys as much as possible because I want them to respect me just as much. That's cool. Do, do you take any kind of inspiration behind from some of the previous females that have raced? Like, obviously, Danica Patrick's a big story now. And then Janet Guthrie, who was the first one to run the Daytona 500, finished very respectively. Do you, do you take any inspiration behind them? I mean, I think it's awesome that the girls are, you know, making it that far and stuff. But I don't really pay too close attention to, like, Danica Weekly or anything like that. If there's one win in your career, or actually, how many wins have you had total first off? Um, in the sport mod, I have two, and then I won a bunch in the sport compact. But. Which one was your biggest? Which one was your favorite? Which one's most memorable win you ever had? Um, most memorable would probably be the first one at Eagle. I mean, everybody was there, the whole family, grandpa, everyone. So it was pretty awesome. 
is is winning at Eagle or and I, I don't I don't want you to try to pick a track, but because your dad used to own, and does he still own part of I eighty? No, or is it all in all? It's in the, the three consistent. Okay, now. is that a little bit more of a special win because that's kind of a family thing, or or is it Eagle because it's a different type of track? Um, I haven't won at I eighty yet. That's definitely going to be special. But Eagle was pretty awesome. I mean, the whole family was there, and it was fan appreciation night, so. Was packed. Had and, a bunch of people. Uh, oh yeah, it was awesome. I can personally test. Laney was on a rail that <laughs> night. She was bad fast. And I you mean, didn't. You, you didn't wreck her that night, right? No. Okay. No. Good. Good. I just wanted to make sure. I know you. Okay. Had we're we're going to put this out here right now. <laughs> I'm tired of hearing it. First us. thing. First thing Bud says is that girl hates me. That girl hates me. And I try to get the story out of him. Then Andrew we, comes in. We, we've never wrecked each other, have story. we? I don't think so. He was talking to me See? about it walking in here, and I don't think we have. <laughs> no. Well, good. I mean, it's I think it's out there. I'm pretty sure you did Lindsay one night, but not me. No. Oh, you did Lindsay one night? <laughs> you wrecked let's, Lindsay let, one yeah, night. Let's, let's clarify that. <laughs> Rachel. Um, she meant wreck. Um, That's what I meant. <laughs> this is PG. <laughs> it's a really good thing it's Sunday morning and there's only three people listening. <laughs> Andrew would take it to that level. In West Point, Nebraska. <laughs> oh, boy. Drinking yes, coffee. Thank you to our West Point, Nebraska <laughs> fans for listening. Please do not call the FCC. <laughs> um, what's your future? looking like are you happy in the sport mods you want to move up to maybe late models maybe something up a little bit higher um actually i did race a cray late model for three years i think oh you did Mm -hmm. Uh and i had a really nasty wreck so dad sold everything (laughs) and it took me about a year and a half to get back in a car but no i'm really happy in the sport mod and my next step would be an a mod but i don't really am no rush to move up there get get your feet under you get some wins yeah and actually the sport mod class is way bigger than the Amon class anymore. So. Yeah, I've noticed that at some of these tracks. Yeah. In my personal opinion, I think we're almost just as fast as the Amods at a lot of tracks. Yeah, you know, we, we I mean, our competition's pretty much just as hard. Yeah. What has been your biggest hurdle as far as getting into getting into the sport? Has it been finding a ride? Has it been uh, getting people to take you seriously? Has it been, uh, you know, wh- what has been your biggest hurdle as far as racing goes? Honestly, I mean, Dad always supports me 100%, so he... You know, if I want to go racing, he's there to go. And most of the guys take me pretty seriously. So I would have to say, like, priorities with school and work would have to be the hardest. Trying to Finding balance. time. Right, for, trying, trying to balance everyday life. Yeah. And, yeah. What, what would be the number one thing to all the young ladies out there listening, you know, all two of them, <laughs> what would be the number one thing that you would give them for, you know, as a piece of advice wanting to get into racing at any level, whether it be sport mod, sport compact, sprint car, late model, whatever? Um, just if you want to do it, there's always a way. Just set your mind to it and respect the guys and they'll respect you back. And then for the biggest in, in-house studio, our very own princess, Andrew Kaziski, what kind of advice could you give him? Um, well, we both need to quit sucking at I-80 and <laughs> <laughs> we'll be just We tend fine. to park next to each other. <laughs> yeah. We both come in with our heads down going, oh, man. Going, let's <laughs> sell this and go buy a boat is pretty much our consensus on Friday nights. It happens. <laughs> what uh, What would you say is your biggest win? One of them that, did we just asked that question, mm-hmm. didn't we? Okay. Yep. Well, that's great. I lost my track. <laughs> well, uh, where can fans find you on a regular basis? Um, majority of the time I'm at I-80 on Fridays and Eagles on Saturdays. Is there any kind of special runs you have coming up? Any kind of like special events you're going to try to go to? Uh, we always go to Nationals and Boone, and then we hit like, you know, the Cornhusker at I-80. Charlie Clark. I just want to point Charlie out. Charlie Clark will that, be there. That's how you say Boone. 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 Both of you guys <laughs> nail that Boone like you're from the, the Appalachian Mountains. <laughs> Boom. Boom. <laughs> Boom. It's nice to hear somebody else say it normally. <laughs> so you're, is there a website we can go to, maybe a Facebook page we can keep track of you and, and fans can find out where you're going to be? Yep. I always put it on my Facebook on the weekend where we're going to go. So and, just. and just for the record, can you spell your name for me? <laughs> My first name is L A I N I. Okay. And then it's S C H W A R T Z. I really do apologize. <laughs> Dan doesn't get I to talk to too many good looking ladies. <laughs> well, they, and, and you guys don't let me talk to, to drivers very much because you know I'll screw something up. So it, uh, yeah, I, I write it out on the sheet how to make sure to pronounce it because <laughs> I, I've learned at Crawford County Speedway each week that. Uh, I'm not very good with the pronunciation, so no. Uh, I, I spelled it out. She, the first thing she goes, um, "That's not how you spell my name." <laughs> Murdered it. <laughs> it was there. Yeah, that is the best way of putting it. <laughs> well, what kind of what sponsors do you have on board? Um, Protech Electric Services, 
DTSI, T Hurt Construction, Speedway Graphics, A and J Digital, and McNew Farms. That's nice. You got those memorized pretty good. Ready to go for Victory Lane when they're asking and you to- TBJ Promotions this TBJ. weekend there you at I eighty. He's right. promoting Eagle Nationals, and he's one of my big sponsors too. So we will be actually out there Friday night. Okay, promoting you know, one that. thing I got to commend Laney on with her program is she's got one of the most dedicated crews out there that I've ever seen. I mean, a lot of times, you know, I might pass her car on the way to Eagle Raceway, and that's the only time I'm going to pass her car during the race <laughs> season. But as I pass her car, I don't see her in the truck. It's her crew guys. They're getting the car there. They're getting the car set up. I mean, my hat's off to, to Laney's uh, pit crew. I mean, outstanding group of uh, young men there. Uh, thank you so much, and thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it, and uh, best of luck to you this season. Thank you, and thank you guys for having me out. Turn four just around the corner. We're going to talk to Andrew about how the chase is lining up for the NASCAR Cup, boys. You're not going to want to miss it. It's turn four coming around the corner on uh, the front stretch presented by Joe's Carding and Council Buffs on AM 590, Omaha's ESPN Radio.